guys, it's Brittany, and welcome to another week of Health Through Literacy. This week, we're going to read the story, We Like to Move, Exercise is Fun, by Elise April, with Regina Sarah Ryan, and illustrated by Diane Iverson, and read today by myself, Brittany Mitchell. Before we begin our story today, looking at the cover and the title of the story, what do you think the story could be about? Well, I notice kids moving around, so it might be different ways that kids like to move around or be active. When you exercise, who do you like to exercise with? Awesome. So I like to do different things with different people too. So with my family, I like to go swimming or going on walks with our dogs. With my friends, I like to dance or do other activities like yoga. Where do you like to exercise outside of school? So where do you go when you exercise? Well, there's many different places we can go to exercise. So there's never just one place we can exercise and it doesn't have to be the gym. We could exercise in our backyard, in our room, at a playground, over a friend's house or family's house. When we're at school, I know this year is not normal, but think about when you were at school, where did you like to exercise? Or when you were at school, when, when did you get to move around or exercise during the school day? Well, many times we exercise at recess, playing games with our classmates and friends, or we exercise when we're in gym class. And why is it good for us to move our bodies around and get exercise every day? Well, remember, when we're active and we exercise every day, we help to grow healthy hearts, bones, and muscles, and get our bodies stronger and healthier. And how do you like to move? When you exercise, what's your favorite thing to do? Awesome. I love to do that, too. I... Personally, my favorite thing to do is dance, and I love swimming. I'm always in the pool. And when we exercise, how long do you think kids should exercise or be active each day? Well, remember, kids should be active for at least 60 minutes a day doing things that they like to do. So today we're going to read the story, We Like to Move, Exercise is Fun, and there's going to be different ways that kids like to move around or exercise. So if you see a move or a kid playing a game that you like to do, I want you to jump up and down and say, woohoo, let's get started with our story today. We Like to Move, Exercise is Fun. We like to hop. We like to swim. We like to climb. We like to spin. We like to kick. We like to bowl. We like to jump. We like to roll. We like to dance. We like to run. We like riding bikes. It's healthy and fun. We like to move from birth to old age. We 
We like to move right off the page. The end. All right, now for our after story questions. For our story, we like to move. Exercise is fun. In our story today, were there any ways to move that were new to you? So something that you've never tried before? Awesome. So there were so many different ways mentioned in the story that kids can move around. Were there any that you would like to try? Awesome. And what do you think you can do when you're at recess or after school to be active today? Is there any favorites that you'd like to do to move around and get active for the day? Cool. Remember, every single day we should be active for at least 60 minutes, which is one hour a day, doing different things that we like to do. And it doesn't have to be all at once, as long as we're moving our bodies and having fun. Thanks for joining on me, and stay tuned for our Curriculum Connection, which will be a science and nutrition focus. All right, guys, now for our Curriculum Connection for today's story, we like to move, exercise is fun. Today, we talked about moving and being physically active, doing different things. And when we're physically active, we also get thirsty sometimes. So have you ever felt like you were doing something and you felt thirsty like you needed water? Yeah, that happens all the time. And when we feel thirsty, chances are that we're already dehydrated or already needing that water. So... As human beings, we're made up of, a majority of our body is made up of water. So water is important for all living things. So today, we're going to do a science and nutrition lesson. And we're going to make a list of things that need water, living things, and non-living things, so things that don't need water. So all living things need water to survive. Just like food, we also need water to survive and be healthy. So to help us out, I brought a couple objects and we're gonna make a list and categorize those objects to things that need water, are living things, and things that don't need water, are non-living things. And we're gonna categorize those couple items and then if you wanna add to the list later, once you get the idea, you can also do that too. So my first item is my stuffed giraffe. So my stuffed giraffe is a stuffed animal. Do you think he needs water? Do you think he's a living thing or non-living thing? Right, he's non-living, so he doesn't need water. So I have a piece of paper, and on one side I wrote living, and on the other side I wrote non-living. So my giraffe toy, I'm just going to write toy under non-living. So my little giraffe toy doesn't need water to survive. He'll be okay. Now, if he was a real giraffe, would a real giraffe need water? Yes, good. So, I'm going to write giraffe under living things. So, if he was a real giraffe, he would need water. So, that's our first item. Good job. Now, I have my plant my beautiful plant and this is a real plant so do you think plants are living or non-living things good they're living but you can also buy fake plants but since i gave you the hint that it is a real plant do real plants need water to survive 
Yes. So would we write a plant under living or non-living? Good job, living. So I'm going to, for my number two, write plants under living. All right. My next item is a crayon. Do you think that a crayon needs water to survive? No. So would a crayon be on the living side or non-living side? Non-living means it does not need water. Good. So for my second non-living thing, I'm going to put crayon. All right, my next item, I have a phone. Do you think a phone is a living or non-living thing? Good, it's a non-living thing. So does our phone need water to survive? No, so under non-living, let's, I have a three, and so I'm going to put phone. All right, my next item is a, toy apple. So this apple is not real. It's a toy apple. Do you think the toy apple needs water to survive? Well, I gave you a hint. Since it's a toy, do toys need water to survive? No. So my fourth thing under non-living, I'm going to put toy apple. Or you could put fake food, too. Uh, now, my next item, I have a real apple. So on our tree, on my apple tree, would the apple tree need water to help grow our apples? Yeah, good job. So for on the living side, for number three, we're going to write apple tree. Our apple tree or plants need water to survive. All right, and my last item, I have a picture of myself and my dog, Pooh Bear. So do, do we, my dog and myself, do we need water to survive? Yeah, so people and animals need water to survive. So people, and number five, animals. Okay, so good job helping me identify our living and non-living things. So I made a list. So my living things, I have a giraffe that needs water. Plants need water, apple trees need water, people need water, and animals need water, or your dog. And a non-living thing, I have toys, crayons, a phone, and toy food or fake food. They don't need water to survive. So if you want to add more things to our list, think about things that need water to survive and things that don't need water to survive. And you can add to the list of things that are living and non-living. Remember, non-living things don't need water to survive and living things do need water because we're made up of mostly water. Thanks for joining me today in our story, We Like to Move, Exercise is Fun, and I hope you see, to see you next time. Bye-bye.